All right. Good morning, everyone. Hope everybody's doing great. Everybody's all right. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, so I run a few minutes behind. Traffic kind of got me. But it's all good. So uh, a few things before we get rolling. Uh, don't forget to pay attention to your emails because, you know, especially during this point in time, we're trying to get everything stuff. Um, you know, I sent a few emails out to you. And I see some people emailed me, but I, I can tell you didn't read the emails I sent. So make sure you pay attention to emails. I am, you know, throwing stuff out there to y'all to make sure y'all are on, um, up to date with the changes and everything that's going on. So when it comes to WebSign, I sent you an email giving you a few suggestions on what you could do in your settings to help you get access if you don't have access at this moment. If they did not work in that same email, I gave you uh, information to be able to contact Cengage and their reps. So they will be able to help you better than I can because they already know the system. They already know what you can do. And what they'll do is troubleshoot it, troubleshoot your computer and whatever your situation is, you know, live. And so, you know, you'll go to their information, click on one of their Zoom links or whatever, or set it up however they got it, they got it so that you can set it up. So make sure you take advantage of that and uh, get connected to WebSign. So since they have given us, you know, access, you know, don't hit me about WebSign as far as connecting because they have already said they are here to help you get connected. So they are the ones to contact. So like I said, try that, try that list of suggestions that they gave. If that doesn't work or don't try it. But if you don't want to try it, then just go ahead and run to them and they'll help you get connected if you are getting that, that error message. OK, also, I know a couple people hit me up for um, help. I wasn't able to set that up uh, as far as uh, email and emailing you back and try to see where you're available. I'll do that sometime today. So if you're waiting on the email response from me, just, you know, give me a, give me a little bit. I'm going to get with you and then we'll go from there. All right. Questions, concerns, comments, everybody good before we get rolling? Everybody good. Now, with that first assignment, if there's any assignment that's giving you trouble, feel free to skip that assignment and go to the next assignment. Like you don't have to stay there and be like, oh man, I can't do this one. I can't do nothing else. That's not how it works. You know, some sections are gonna be easier than others. So feel free to go to the next section, see if you can uh, knock that one out. Like, especially once you get into the homework, I saw how, how the head of the department set it up. Some of them are like, they only got like five questions in there. So all of them not as extensive as that first assignment may be. So don't let one assignment scare you from the other one to go ahead and start you know other ones because right now this is our fourth um homework section so and some of them they may be easier than others just like i know i'm going to talk about when i look at the problems that she set up in there i'm going to talk about more in this lecture than they're actually in the homework problems so don't be afraid of assignments and going into your assignments and checking them out all right so let's go ahead and i'll uh, talk about uh b4 uh, we've done some of these uh, problems before, these type of problems. I'm just going to go through them again because, you know, you can't get too much practice. And so I'm going to, you know, just delete some of it and then walk through it. So we have 3x minus 7 equal to negative 5. And so our goal, once again, when we talked about solving before, is to get our variable by itself. And what we need to do is undo what's being done to that variable in order to get it alone. So we have 3x minus 7 equal to negative 5. The minus 7 is the easiest thing to move first. And so that means we're going to plus 7. Uh, but if we do that to the left side of our equal sign, then we need to do that to the right side of our equal sign as well. That allows the 7 to cancel on the left, leaving you with just 3x. And then negative 5 plus 7 is 2. And then right here, we're looking at 3x equal to 2. That's three times x, so we need to divide both sides by three in order to undo that the, the multiplication of three. Three is cancel, and x is equal to two thirds. Questions on that? Make sure you are. Can I scroll up? I know this is my next screen for a minute. Anyway, so uh, look at this next one. Oh, sorry. All right. All right, so let's look at this one. This one is a little different because we have our X term on different sides of our equation. So now our goal should be to get all of our terms with X on one side, all the terms about X to the other. So either I'm going to take this 2X over here 
or I need to take this 5X over here. It's up to you how you want to do it. doesn't matter. Eventually, you'll come up with the same answer. Um, what I'm going to do is take the 5 over here, the 5X, and the way we'll do that is since that's a positive 5X, I'm going to subtract 5X from both sides of my equation. All right. Notice I'm not trying to move the 5 off the X. I'm trying to take the whole 5X term over. So we're going to subtract 5X from both sides. 5X minus 5X cancels. And that'll leave me with negative 3X plus 3 equal to negative 9. Now I need to take the 3 to the other side. So I will subtract 3 from both sides. And that'll be 3x equal to negative 12. And then divide both sides by negative 3. x is equal to positive 4. So we have negative 12 over negative 3. That would be positive 4. Good All right, next one's a little more adding to it. Same thought process though. So let me erase some of this stuff. All right, so we have four plus five times the quantity of two x minus three equal to three times the quantity of four x minus one. Oh, yeah, I just had a thought. Also, I sent another email to you guys letting you know that I shifted those dates. Remember, I told you, you know, make sure everything was open. So I did that for y'all. I didn't put the fifth week date in yet because I didn't count it off yet, but I just made sure everything was open so you have full access. But we know five weeks. So we got one week in, so we got four more weeks before something is due. So, but that data will be put in. And like I said, I'll be reminding y'all. It's not like it's going to be a shop to the system not to do or something. I'll be telling y'all about it. But also, I'll let you know how many attempts are going to be for each. You know, I think it's like 100 for your homeworks, 10 for quizzes, you know, attempts. And then uh, two would be for your tests. So now in web assign, you don't see any tests because I haven't put posted them yet. Um, but when I do post a test, then you have two attempts. Now, if anything crazy happens, right? Like you make it doing your stuff. Let's say you were doing a test and a cat walked across your keyboard, hit enters, anything funky happened. Just, it's just a conversation, y'all. It ain't like I can't give you another attempt or whatever. But I won't know unless you tell me. So, I mean, if you want to just take an L, then fine. But I'm just saying, all you got to do is talk to me about it. It's, it's not, but that's just the settings that you have without a discussion. All right. So let's go ahead and look into this one. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is distribute. So I'm going to take the 5 into the 2x minus 3. Take the 3 into the 4x minus 1. Oh, now I will say this about the homework. It only go up to 100. So if you use up 100 attempts, <laughs> something like that. But the other ones we can't add attempts to. So, all right. So five times 2x is 10x. Five times negative three is negative 15. That's how we got that. Three times 4x is 12. Three times one is three. So now over here on this left side of my equal sign, I went ahead and combined my like terms. I had four and negative 15, which gave me negative 11. And once again, we had a scenario in which we have two X terms, one on each side of our equal sign. So you just have to make a decision on which one you're taking to which side. I'm going to take my 10 to the left. Once again, it doesn't matter. If I wanted to, I can bring my 12 over here. Do what you want to do. As long as you do it correctly mathematically, you'll still get the same answer. And I'm just doing the opposite because I did the other side last time. So no big deal. So if I subtract 10 X from both sides, 10x minus 10x cancels. These me was just negative 11 on the left. And then on the right, 
12x minus 10x is 2x minus 3. Questions, questions, questions. And then we add three to both sides. These cancel on the right. On the left, we left with negative eight. And we can finish it off by dividing both sides by two. X is equal to negative four. And questions that I'm good, I'm still right. All right, so the next one is dealing with fractions. Next two, um, we're dealing with fractions. And um, whenever we have fractions involved in an equation, what we can do is what we call clearing out our fractions, clearing out our fractions. So notice we have two thirds X plus one half plus uh, equal to three fourths. So the first thing you want to do is find the LCD. And notice in the blue, I put a note for, uh, just to remind you of what the LCD is. That's the smallest number that each can divide into even. So what's the smallest number that three, two, and four? Those are our denominators. Our bottom numbers, what's the smallest number that three, two, and four can divide into even, and that's going to be 12. Now, by some chance, uh, you don't do the smallest number. As long as those three numbers can divide into an even, you'll still be okay. So let's say if you did 24, three, two, and four can divide into 24 even, so you'll still be fine. But that's the main thing, finding a number that three, two, and four can divide into even. We normally say look for the LCD, the smallest number, but uh, you know, because if you use the smallest number, that's then that's the least amount of calculation you have to do. But if you use larger numbers, it's fine. As long as the three, two, and the four in your denominator can divide into that number, that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. So our LCD is 12, and notice step two, we're going to multiply that 12 to each numerator. Notice we're not talking about top and bottom of the fraction, we're just talking about the top, we're multiplying across the equation. So the numerator is the top number, we're going to multiply that LCD to 12 to each numerator. Make sure we're okay with those first two steps before we scroll up. I still got some. Yeah. So, only the first one, um, because why is it that? Because it's only, well, you don't do the top and bottom. Okay. Yeah. So, the way you write this stuff out, 2x over 3 or 2 thirds x, those are the same thing. But if you were to put that x down bottom, now you got something totally different. Uh, and then if you had it both top and bottom, that's something totally different too, because now your x is too canceled and leaving you just two thirds. So it's only one x. So it's either sitting on the complete outside or it's up there with the new one. Yes. Because that's the smallest number that three, two, and four can divide into even. So in other words, three can divide into 12, two can divide into 12, and four can divide into 12. And so, like I'm saying, you don't necessarily have to give 12, you can do 24. As long as 3, 2, and 4 can divide into this number, then we do it. So we could do 48. It's just that the larger the numbers you use, you know, the larger the numbers you don't have to deal with, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why we always say we look for the smallest if we can find it. Mm -hmm. So, which, uh, and so when we look at verse, I said verse three, but uh, I meant uh, step three. When we look at step three, uh, this is why we need three, two, and, and four to be able to divide into this number that we call the LCD, because that's what that's what's going to happen. So the three is going to divide into the 12, leave you with four. Two divides to 12, leave you with six. And then four divides to 12, and leave you with three. And you see we have this left. So make sure we're okay before we keep going. And you see once you get here, now our fractions are completely gone. And we can go ahead and move forward with a regular equation. So four times two x is eight x. Six times one is six. Three times three is nine. So now we have eight x plus six equal to nine. And now we can just solve this equation like we've done the previous equations. Subtracting six from both sides, giving me eight x equal to three, and then divide both sides by eight, and x is equal to three x. Questions, any questions? Or we do another one. You know, throw it up for you. All right, let's try it again. Make sure we're okay. So this time I didn't just do it stuff, but you know, with one, two, three, but it's still the same process. So this is how you do it, you know, more so in your notes. First thing you want to do is find your LCD. We have two thirds X minus five, six, equal to negative one third. So you follow the stuff that I gave you in the first problem. LCD is what we're looking for. What's the smallest number that our denominators? We have three, six, and three. What's the smallest number that each one of those can divide into? And it's going to be six, but of course, six can divide into itself. And so you take that LCD and multiply it to each numerator. Now that you multiply each numerator um, by the LCD, you can divide the denominators, those bottom numbers, into the uh, LCD, which is six. So three divided into six leaves you with two. Six divided into six leaves you with one. And then three divided into six leaves you with two. So you see down here, now that our denominators are gone, that's two times two X minus one times five equal to two times negative one. Yep. Okay, so yeah, I lost some of the stuff. I'm right here to here, or do I need yeah. to? Okay. So, the, the, the second part. So, I got how the two, you know, so then it's like this two times two X. Mm -hmm. The one, so is it because the six points are each other out? Exactly. Or the one? Right. So, you have any number over itself is one. Okay. Mm -hmm. so the six and the two. Huh? 
Right here? No, right here. Here? Yeah. So three divides into six and these are your two. Two, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just six divided by three is two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now two times two X is four X, one times five is five, and then two times ne negative one is negative two. And what we do from here is add five. We cancel the four is equal to three. Divide both sides by four, X is equal to three fourths. Okay, so now we're gonna add three to this. Questions, any questions? Make sure you're all right. All right, yeah. So next few problems are just solving for a specified variable. So in this case or these cases, we're not gonna have a solid number as our answer. So we're not gonna have X equal to five or like in our last one, X equal to three fourths. Uh, we're gonna have more than one variable involved. And our goal is just to get the variable that they asked us for by itself. And the other, uh, on the other side of the equation would just be an expression. So, maybe I don't that last one. Okay. So, we're looking at this e equation of 3x minus 4y equals 12. We want to solve it for x. So, this is our original equation 3x minus 4y equals 12. And once again, we want to solve it for x. So, let me erase this real quick. So, when you look at what we have here, how's it going, sir? We, have three, uh, we want to get X by itself. So it means we need to get this over here and we need to get this three over here in order for X to be by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is move that Y term. So we're going to add four Y to both sides. So that they cancel out completely on the left, leaving with just three X. And then on the right, we have four Y plus 12. Then from there, we still need to get the three off of X. Those uh, still get this three off of X. So now we need to divide both sides by three. So that they cancel out on the left side, leaving with just X. But we have to be careful. This three has to go to each term in that numerator. So that's 4y over 3 plus 12 over 3. And so we do want to explore those type of situations because if this 12 can be divided by 3, then we need to go ahead and do it. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. And so that will be our most simplified expression. x equal to 4y over 3 plus 4. And that's where you stop. And once again, you go just to get x by itself. This is another way. Another way this could have been written. I guess web assignment is you know what they want from me. You could have had four y plus twelve. 
that's another way it could be written. And like I said, weather sign will let you know. Yes, so you would have subtracted three X from both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that'll be good. We'll look at the next one. Just got two more, and I'll be done. Okay. Can I Oh, okay. All right, so the next one we have A equal to P times this quantity of one plus I. I'm going to solve for I. So notice we don't have access to I because it's in the parentheses. So we need to remove those parentheses. And the way we do that is by going ahead and distribute the P into the parentheses. So when we distribute P, that's A equal to P plus PI. So now we have access to I, and we need to get this P over here. So we'll just subtract P from both sides. Now, don't forget, these letters represent numbers. So whatever you would do with numbers, that's, that's the same way you operate with these letters. So just like if I had uh, 7 equal to 5 plus I don't know, 3I, I would subtract 5 from both sides. So that's the same thought process here that we're doing. Exact same thing. It's just that we don't know what these letters are, what, what what numbers these letters represent. All right. So P cancel on the left. We have A minus P. And now I need to divide by P. P I means P times I. So I need to divide by P. These cancel. And so I have A minus P over P. And I can start right there. Make sure we're all right. And once again, you know, some of the stuff, some questions may not pop up until you actually start doing it. So you know, get in there and start working on it a little bit, see if any questions are generated. <laughs> and like I told your classmate uh, the other day, uh, if you haven't seen this before, I haven't seen it in a while, um, it's unrealistic to sit back and say, oh, I got it, or because I don't have it. Now I need to quit class or something like that. Give yourself a chance. Just like if you eat something, you don't expect to digest it within seconds and get all the nutrients from it. It's the same thing. You gotta give yourself a chance to digest what you just internalized. So um, if you don't get it just yet, you know, sometimes your mind still processes stuff. Sometimes it you know, takes a little while. You know, and the more you see it, the more you're exposed to it, the more you get comfortable with it, the more it you know, makes sense to you. So that's where practice comes in and getting into actually doing the work or even asking you know, questions about what you've seen. So I'll give yourself a chance. That's all I'm saying, give yourself a chance. So solve for C. Oh, also I didn't mention this. Um, if they give you capital letters and they give you lowercase letters, hold true to whatever they give you or they will mark it wrong. Because in mathematics, there's only 26 letters in the alphabet. So if they give you a capital C versus lowercase C, then that capital C represents a different number than the lowercase C. So you can't just frivolously just use whatever letters you want. So uh, in this last one, it's capital A minus capital P over capital P equal to lowercase i. So you have to hold true to all the letters that they gave you in the cases that they gave you. We're just throwing it out there, just reminding me when I saw capital C. So we have S equal to C minus R C. And our goal is to the C. So notice, though, in this scenario, we have C in more than one place. But we need C to be in one place. So it's going to call you to uh, pull on your factoring skills a little bit, and so we want to factor out C. I probably should have put the arrow this way. Anyway, we're going to factor out C, and that means I'm going to pull C out of each turn. So in this one, if I pull C out of that, all I'm left with is one, because, you know, C times one is just C. 
And then here, if I have RC, if I pull C out of it, I'm left with the R. So if you don't remember, fa remember factoring, then make sure you get with me. Now, whatever, whenever I factor, if I multiply it back out, I should get what I originally had. So in other words, C times C, C times one, excuse me, is C, C times R is RC. So that lets me know I, I got that what I originally had. So that's how that works. So when you talk about factoring, you always can check it to make sure that you have your uh, correct factoration by just multiplying it back out. So we pull C out. So now we have a single C. And now we have C times, we have C times one minus R. I need to get that one minus R off of C. So I divide both sides by one minus R. And that cancels on the right. And on the left, I have S over one minus R. And that's my answer. C is equal to S over one minus R. Yes. Now, I just did that multiplication just to check to make sure I had the right factorization. So factoring is really the reversal of multiplication. So I had C, let's say if I have uh, 2X minus 10, and I want to factor out 2. If I factor out 2, in other words, pull 2 out of each term, I'm left with X because that was 2X. And then what times 2 gives me 10? 5. And so now if I were to multiply this back out, two times X is two X, two times five is 10. See what I'm saying? So when I factor out a two, it needs to be when I multiply it back out or multiply it back in, it gives me what I originally had. Hmm? All right, so let's say if I had three Y minus 21, right? And I want to factor out three. So what's left in my parentheses? Right here, if I pull three out of this term, what's left? Huh? Where what times three will give me 20? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So that would be seven, because three times seven is 21. Right? Because if I do three times one is three, three times seven is 21. So it gives me what I originally had. All right, so now we go back to uh, we go back to this one. C minus R C. If I pull C out, the only thing was here was C, so that means I'm left with just one. And then here, that would be R. Mm -hmm. What did you just gave me R? What did you just say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Because now if I do that, when I multiply this out, what am I left with? Negative CR. I, got, I have to get this back. So there has to be something right here. This right here? Which, which C? This one? It come, that's what I'm saying. You're pulling it out. You're saying, what's the common term between both of these terms? and you bring that one number to the front. So now, don't forget your distribution. If I have C times, let's say X plus Y, when I distribute, that's C times X and C times Y, right? So I have CX plus CY. So factoring is taking this and taking it back to that. It's undoing the distribution. You notice how here is only one C, right? But when you distribute it out, you have two C's. So now it's the undoing of that and taking it reverse, it's reversing that. So that's the whole, that's factoring. Yeah. So we might have to, you know, we might have to talk again about it, but that's that's factoring. The foundation of factoring is undoing the multiplication. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? So yeah. So um, if not, you know, the, you know, like I said, some foundational stuff, you may have to go back and revisit. Or when you get into the homework, if you get this one concept, like I said, I think that was the only one like that. So if you could just lean on what we just did in this one, follow the, the pattern, you might be good. You may not have to go deep into factoring 
in your fighting skills. So uh, try it out, though. See if you get it. If you got it, you nothing to talk about. But if you don't, then we'll meet up. We'll talk. So if you guys are good, I'm good. Um, that's it for B4. Uh, I know either Wednesday, I'm going to look at this, look at what we got, either Wednesday or Friday. I'm going to give you all room to just ask whatever questions you want to ask. So um, I'll shoot y'all an email. If I, if I decide to do a Wednesday, then y'all can just bring questions to clear. I won't do anything. So those type of days, I won't do anything new. I will just give you, you know, just be the floor just open. So that means I ain't bringing questions. I'm expecting y'all to bring them to me. And so that, to me, that's that's the way to keep up, you know, what we're doing honest is that y'all bring the questions and then we can go ahead and knock them out. All right, so I'll email y'all about that. But one of these days, either Wednesday or Friday, we'll do that. Other than that, so if you guys are good, I'm good. Have a good one. Be safe. And I'll see you in a second. So pay attention to your emails. Like I said, for those who may have missed the beginning of the class, I'm emailing y'all. I've been emailing y'all a lot lately. Uh, you know, some people keep emailing me about WebAssign. Don't forget the WebAssign element of what's going on right now. If you have questions or whatever, now I've given you the information to reach out to Cengage. They've already said we open. We need, you know, tell them to contact us. They will be um, able to help you quicker than I can because they know what the issues are. So make sure that from this point forward, if you have any uh, problems with connecting or, or registering for WebAssign, go ahead and hit um, Cengage up. I sent that information to you in the email um, over the weekend. All right. You guys have a good one. Be safe. I'll see you uh, next match.